when I converted like outside of the masjid, like my internal conversion, if you will, the moment when I was like, aha, it was light and like an ultimate like uplifting feeling, like the feeling of complete peace and tranquility. I was born with Islam, but on many personal levels, I completely relate to the convert experience. It's different from actually practicing Islam because you have to, you know, it's the difference between a wedding and a marriage. You know, you ride the high of getting married and you know, there's beautiful flowers and then you know, you realize that there's a lot of work actually put behind it. I can relate to coming to that point in your life when you realize that you really want to commit to this faith. And for many American-born Muslims that, who may have faltered along, that, along the way, they have also felt that moment. Coming into Islam, I think people just boom automatically as soon as they hear my shahada, oh you're Muslim so you're going to start wearing hijab and you know how to pray or just learn how to pray and you'll be good and just make sure you fast and no pork and no alcohol and along with the bombardment I think people just wanted me to like magically turn Muslim and I, I, that doesn't happen, it's an evolutionary process within yourself um, from the inside out. Me becoming Muslim, you know, I was looking for others that looked like me Fortunately, I found those people, but it wasn't, you know, from the, the moment that I came into the Dean. Young people or people of any age recommitting to Islam, there is this element of shame, of feeling like if I knew what Islam was, if I had Islam, if my name is Muslim, why haven't I been on this perfect straight path all along? Coming into the Dean, you're leaving behind a way of life that you formerly lived, and that's a big change. Islam is a lifestyle and you need to feel safe and secure within yourself but also when you're going out. Most converts probably just need people to just keep calling them, keep calling them, keep calling them. I never really called people and said, hey, can you teach me Salah or hey, can you teach me how to say Surat al-Fatiha and stuff like that. Like they called me, they were like, hey, come over and let's practice. I was a very social person, always going out and doing lots of things. And when I became Muslim, I didn't want that to have to stop. I just needed to know how to do it in a different manner. Um, we often embrace people who become Muslim on the first day and give them hugs. Um, but on the second day, it's like we've almost forgotten them. We have no lack of people converting to Islam. The problem is that the support is not there to keep them within the community. And, and um, chances are more often than not that they will end up leaving the community because simply of lack of support. Two thirds, two thirds of people who become Muslim in America end up leaving Islam later. An ideal convert program would definitely include education to further and deepen my knowledge. And I also think feeling safe, safe and secure in an environment that allows me to be Heather, but still um, continue to grow within my faith. Serving the convert community and providing that network of support is nothing new to Islam or Islam's history. It was actually done by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, himself. In the very first convert community in Mecca, there was a, an early convert who gave his own home, um, and it was called Dar al Arqam, where the first Muslim community used to gather and meet and learn their religion and support one another amidst all of the mockery and the torture and the alienation that they faced. People embracing Islam for the first time and people recommitting to Islam face many of the same challenges. Some of those issues include a feeling of isolation in the community, loneliness, cultural issues and identity issues. What people most need is really just compassion and empathy. The prophetic tradition teaches us to care for humanity and to be there for people. If there's a place where you know Muslims who identify with the convert experience or just understand that experience and are patient can, can be there to work with convert Muslims and help them evolve, I think that would be a great program. Salam Community Network was really inspired by an organization called Ta'lif Collective, founded by Osama Kanan. And what really struck us about Ta'lif 
was that it was addressing a need that the mosques were not addressing. Salam Community Network is different from other organizations because we are attempting to take a systemic approach to some of the challenges our community faces and individuals in our community are facing. So our goal is to develop the whole individual. So rather than just give them a class here or there, we're really there to be a supportive framework in which they can learn and grow. The program that is a resource for the Cincinnati community and is striving to achieve those goals. A new Dar al Arqam here in Cincinnati is, uh, where they can learn their religion, where they can spend time with others who are struggling with the same struggles, and where they can feel that sense of solidarity and community. It's a link, it's a networking tool for everyone in the community, not just um, converts with people that are coming back. They may have been born Muslim, but uh, they don't know that much about it and they want to you know, learn more about their Islam. Salam Community Network seeks to provide a safe space where we can all be works in progress. The word Salam is the Arabic word for peace. So our goal is to create an environment in which people can come and embrace Islam and enter into a community where they feel warmly embraced. Also, the goal for each soul is to achieve a state of tranquility with God. So we want to be there to help people progress along that journey and provide the nurturing context in which to enter into the community.